a young patient presents with low levels of serum vitamin E, vitamin D, and vitamin K. The attending physician has further evaluated the patient and has recommended PERT therapy. Which of the following conditions does the patient most likely have? A. Cystic fibrosis. B. Achalasia. C. Diverticulosis. D. Phenylketonuria. So let's highlight our keywords of young patient, low levels of serum vitamin E, vitamin D, and vitamin K, recommend PERT therapy, and most likely have. So let's start with A. So cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder that can cause malabsorption of fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin E, vitamin D, and vitamin K, so check there. Also, low levels of these vitamins can occur in people because they can't access pancreatic enzymes because the body's ducts are being blocked by the signature thick secretions that take place in cystic fibrosis. And PERT therapy is commonly used in cystic fibrosis to aid digestion and absorption of nutrients. So the question also mentions that it's a young patient, and people are generally very young when they are diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. The symptoms pretty much lead themselves into noticing something is wrong, and usually parents take the child to get assessed, and that's where they discover it. So this can definitely be the right answer choice. Let's go through the other answers just for review. How about B, achalasia? So this is about when the esophagus can't move contents into the stomach, and it's usually due to the lower esophageal sphincter's lack of ability to relax, and it could lead to dysphagia. Now, you usually start with pureed moist thick foods, then slowly progress to thickened liquids, but there's no recommendation that's very common about using PERT therapy with achalasia. And remember, the question is asking, which of the following conditions does the patient most likely have? So, considering this, we can eliminate B. How about C, diverticulosis? So, diverticulosis is when we have those small pouches that herniate out in the intestinal wall's lining. It's not typically associated with PERT therapy, so we can eliminate it. How about D, phenylketonuria? So this is an accumulation of phenylalanine because of the missing phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme, and it can affect brain development and function. Generally, we recommend low protein and high carb, but there is really no recommendation of PERT that's common with this condition, so we can eliminate this as well, leaving us with A, and that is indeed the correct answer.